and unfortunately the timeline and it just didn't work out for us. Obviously very disappointing. Um, like I said, no one comes here wanting to do anything other than represent the country in the Olympics. In life, we are bound to succeed and fail, maybe even several times. That being said, Abby Steiner's tears are completely understandable. You know, we put our heart and soul into this sport, um, put in so much work during the season to get here. So yeah, it doesn't feel good, obviously. So. After all, you can only imagine the heartbreak and disappointment that comes after losing something that you worked really hard for. And as you all know, Abby struggled to come to where she is now although she failed to be a part of the team going to Paris. The fact that she had surgery, twice, in the second half of last year, but was still able to run against the fastest women in the world is remarkable in and of itself. It couldn't have been easy, suffering an injury and getting medical help for it, and diving right back into training once she was well enough to do it. That just shows her dedication to her craft. That too is notable given her young age. After last year's US Championships, she had to take time off due to an injury. The recovery period kept her off the track until early April, and when she competed in her first race in as many months, the American Sprint Sensation made a triumphant return to the track with a comfortable victory in the women's 400 meters at the 2024 Gamecock Invitational. There, she clocked 51.58 seconds, the fastest time across all sections of the event, to clinch first place comfortably in section one. She then continued her competitive season at the 2024 Tom Jones Memorial Invitational, held at the James G. Presley Stadium Percy Beard Track at the University of Florida in Gainesville, Florida in mid-April. There, she continued her recovery from surgery with another solid performance, this time over the 100 meter. Steiner, who underwent heel surgery last September to address a persistent Achilles tendonitis issue, clocked a time of 11.05 seconds to win her heat of the women's 100 meter and placed fourth overall in the list of competitors. Steiner also ran as part of the USA Red Team, along with Micaiah Briscoe, Jenna Prandini, and Alea Hobbs who finished second in the women's 4x400 meter relay in a time of 3, 24.09. The win went to the Empire Athletics Quartet that featured world and Olympic champion Shauna miller Weibo from the Bahamas on the anchor leg. Then, in the women's 4x100 meter, a US team comprising Micaiah Briscoe, Abby Steiner, Jenna Prandini, and Alea Hobbs won in 41.94 seconds closely followed by another US team in 41.99 seconds. She'd been out of the game for a few months, but she ran right at it in full speed as she continued to exhibit her dominance in the sport. At the USATF Bermuda Grand Prix held in late April, Steiner clinched a win for the United States. The 24-year-old sprinter, signed by Puma, made her 200-meter season debut dash at the event securing gold with a time of 22.71 seconds. This marked her second consecutive 200-meter win on the island. She made an impressive stride towards increasing her speed and clinched the first position in the event. She registered a runtime of 22.71 seconds and left behind the likes of Kennedy Flannel and Ashanti Moore. Even though the runtime was far off from her personal best of 21.77 seconds in the 200-meter, it was quite impressive considering her return from a serious injury. Still, the time made her the only woman to breach the 23-second mark. From there, she continued to stride towards her goal, making the Olympic team going to Paris. At the 2024 USATF Los Angeles Grand Prix held at UCLA's Drake Stadium in mid-May, she finished second with 22.32 seconds, while Gabby Thomas, the Olympic bronze medalist and world silver medalist, was sixth in 22.68. It was two-time Olympic champion Sydney McLaughlin Lavrone who blazed to victory in the women's 200 meter. Oh, look at that lead for the Olympic champion in the 400 meter hurdles. No hurdles today and no trouble taking down the best in the world. Then there's the recently concluded 2024 United States Olympic trials for track and field held at Hayward Field in Eugene, Oregon. 
There, the University of Kentucky alumni kept the momentum going in the women's 200-meter first rounds, where she finished second in her heat and third overall in 22.29. She also earned an automatic qualifier to the semifinal round. In the semifinal, Abby ran the fourth fastest time in the semifinals, with a season's best 22.03, finishing second in her semifinal heat behind Gabby Thomas, who ran 21.78, the fastest time in the world this season. Women's 100-meter champion Shakari Richardson and Long ran the second and third fastest times in the semifinals, with a time of 21.92 and 22.01 respectively. From there, Steiner was set to compete in the 200-meter final. Unfortunately, in the final at Hayward Field in Eugene, Oregon, it was Gabby Thomas who clocked a 21.81 for the win. And so Gabby is bound for Paris and will be joined by first-time Olympians Brittany Brown and Mackenzie Long, who finished 2-3 in 21.90 and 21.91, respectively. Richardson, on the other hand, clocked in at 22.16. And as you may have already concluded, Abby Steiner, unfortunately, didn't make it to the top three. Instead, her 22.24 in the final placed her sixth in the race. She did, however, hit a personal best of 22.03 at the 200 meter semifinal, as earlier mentioned. That's probably a good enough silver lining for the loss, as her new PB made her the fifth fastest woman in the 200 meter this season. The fact that she was trailing just behind Gabby Thomas, the fastest woman in the 200 meter this season, has to count for something, right? This is not the end of the road, or track, for Abby, though. Yeah, I was looking for a little bit more for myself. Um, I feel like I have it in me, so, you know, I'm gonna go back and look at what I did wrong and just keep learning for the rest of the season. In an Instagram post, she posted a series of photos that would probably be best described as her journey. In the post, she noted that she had Haglund surgery on her left foot in August 2023. By September, she had the same surgery on her right foot. She also expressed both her disappointment and hope in the same post as she wrote, so desperately wanted this to be the comeback season of my life and gave it everything I could to make it happen. To put it simply, it didn't. Abby also took time to thank those who are rooting for her no matter what. Thanks to those who continue to believe in me, regardless of the outcome. It hasn't been an easy journey these past couple of years, but I'll be back, she added. As many athletes before her had already pointed out, one support system is very important. Fortunately, Abby has just that. This point. Not yeah, my parents, my boyfriend, my coach, agent. Um, I couldn't ask for a better support system. I know that they're there for me, cheering me on, whether I win this me or fall on my face. Not to mention her fans too. Um, oh. So I'm very thankful to have all of the people, especially through this year, just lifting me up in so many ways when I needed it. Overall, Abby Steiner went to the U.S. Olympic trials with the hope of having a smooth comeback after an injury-plagued 2023, but could not fulfill her dream of qualifying for the Paris Olympics. She was bidding for a ticket in the 100 meter and 200 meter, but failed to live up to the billing after finishing out of the podium positions at the US Olympic track and field trials. In the 100 meter, the two-time world champion was eliminated after the preliminaries, after finishing fifth in 11.13. In the 200 meter, she was off to a great start, finishing second in the preliminaries and semifinal and clocking 22.29 and 22.03, respectively. However, things went south in the final of the 200 meter, where she was forced to finish sixth in 22.24. But again, it's not the end for her. And then, you know, still have the rest of the season. Yeah, totally. Um, like I said, getting to this meet is so much fun, running against these ladies. I feel like it really just kind of like feels the competitor in me. When she's there, she will most definitely reach higher heights, or shorter times in this case. Can you your season after today? Yeah, I think that's the plan. We haven't really talked. At the end of the day. It's good to just be back. And I mean, I love doing this. Like, through, though sometimes it sucks, a lot of the times it's really fun. So, um, yeah, just getting in the environment like this again, it gets me excited to keep going. Here's who's going to Paris anyway. 